Welcome to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence on Win Win Women TV. This show is all about sharing the tips, tools, and techniques that will allow you to step boldly in the direction of your dreams despite your feelings, fears, or past failures. To imagine what's possible for yourself and live the life you deserve. Welcome to this episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV. I'm your host, Alicia Curry, and with me today is the amazing Juanina Ray DeBello. But before we get started with her, I wanted just to encourage you to go to the winwinwomen.com website and check out all the amazing things that they have there. If you want to connect with other women, maybe in your local community, they have these amazing local events that Win Win Women put together. They're called Circles. And check it out to see if there's one in an area near you. Also, make sure to connect with me on alicia360.com. If you have any questions or just want to connect and find out more about what we're going on, what we have going on, be sure to reach out and check that out and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Alicia Curry. So let me tell you a little bit about Juanina Ray, and then we'll bring her up for this amazing conversation we're about to have. So she is the founder of Noble Methods. She delivers world-class business operating systems to organizations. She is a power of positive leader and teams with John Gordon Group's uh, she's certified in that. She's also a certified Colby uh, consultant, and she's a part of the Ben Newman Uncommon Live Legacy Group. So she has a wealth, a wealth, a wealth of knowledge to share with us. And today we're really going to talk about taking that head trash, all those negative self-talk things that we do, and how do we shift that and develop mental, mental toughness. So welcome to the show, Juanina Ray. Thank you so much, Alicia. I appreciate you having me on here, and uh, I look forward to collaborating and sharing some wisdom and the hard knocks to get there to keep some folks from not having to go through the same trenches I've been through. Yes, and speaking of those trenches, uh, why don't you share with our audience a little bit of, just a little bit of history, a little bit of background of how your head trash started so that they understand that you're not just talking the talk, you're walking the talk. Um, usually when I talk to people, I tell them I'm, I'm really sorry, but I think I might have prayed for COVID. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, um, I was on a hamster wheel. I have two uh, at the time, young daughters, and it was just there's social media to keep up with. There's my career. I'm a wife. My husband had a business. My parents passed away. I was dealing with all of their um, deals. I wanted to raise happy, healthy young women, um, get them involved in everything. I'm keeping up with the Joneses or whoever those are, right? And so there's all this stuff. Like I was just on this hamster wheel going around and around. And I was like, please, I went off the hamster wheel. And then COVID hit. And it was like, oh. An opportunity to get off this flipping wheel. Because when every time I tried to get off the wheel, right, it was, it was like a vortex. Something else in. pulled you back in. Sucked you right. Back so in. even though I saw it, I'm trying, getting all this stuff, but it's like this vortex. Then COVID stops. The world stops, right? There's nothing. And so from there, but when the world stopped, the stuff in here, it still kept spinning. It went into overdrive. Correct. There was just this head trash is what I came up with. You can call it a dust storm or dirt devil, a tornado, whatever was going on. But it was just the questions just started going about myself and where am I going? And I couldn't stop that. What was going on in here? I could get off the wheel of comparing myself or having to show up at events because I didn't have to. Right. The, it, the world mm -hmm. stopped, but I couldn't stop what was going on from here. So from there, I started. So that kind of gives you a big a backdrop of that part of where I was at and that yeah. I really was living it is just so many things had gone on and there was a lot that I wasn't dealing with. In here. And a lot from childhood, from past hurts, from all kinds of stuff that we deal with. But then when you didn't have the busyness of life distracting you from those things, that just amplified now. So now you just had all these thoughts, all these things going on in your mind and you didn't have a way to really 
deal with it in a positive way to help you move forward? Does that summarize it a little bit? I think, yeah, I think this that's very succinct. It's just uh, when the world stopped, then all of a sudden I realized how much was happening in here. It really wasn't the world that I needed to stop. I needed to work on what was going on in here. I didn't really need the social media to stop. I didn't need all those other things that I was, I still wanted to be a wife. I wanted to help my husband with his business. I wanted to be a good mom. That didn't need to stop. What I found out was I was wasting a lot of energy on things that didn't serve me. Mm, Yeah. So you're here today to give us some tips. And I just want to let you know, Juanina and I have become very close friends indeed, spiritual sisters. And, and so I invited her to come on the show because um, she shared this with me. And I thought this is, this is really, really powerful. And I think other people need to understand these steps of how to clear some of that clutter out and really be focused and intentional. So I, I thank you for saying yes. I know this was short notice. I kind of just threw this at you (laughs) and you said, yes, Uh, I'm glad that you're willing to do that. So what is some, what is the first step that someone should take if they realize that they're on that hamster wheel and they have all these thoughts that are just swirling around and they can't slow it down or, or find their way through it? There's some of it I would first start off with is you need to switch into neutral and us being overachievers or, you know, like we're going after it. It's like, you want me to switch into neutral? Have you lost your mind? I got to go. And when you think about it from a car standpoint, right? If I need to turn, I don't usually turn at 90 miles an hour. It doesn't usually work out so well. But, and if I need to readjust my, I need to slow down, stop, and then decide where I'm going. And so that's kind of the idea from slipping and switching into neutral. And it's, what do I know to be true? When I'm sitting still, I know that. So that's the first start is realizing getting into neutral is where I talk about it's like, okay, well, how do I get there? Because I'm going so fast. The first right. thing is, it's really getting a brain dump. What do you mean a brain dump? Like write it all down. If it's find a trusted Alicia in your life and say, let me call her <laughs> up and say, this is, this is, this, this. and it, it true is some, some of us like, Hey, write it down. That works journaling. Some of it is get a friend. That's not just a friend, but an ally. That's going to really tell you what they hear. And what no they judgment. See. No, they're and they're zoned in on you not their phone, not anything else. It's like, Hey, I, and usually it's not a lot of time. It could be, but you, like 10 minutes, Alicia, do you have 10 minutes? I just need to get all of this out of my head and then put it down. And if you can take notes for me so we can kind of go back over it, whatever that brain dump looks like to you, there's not a right or wrong. It's just get it out of here because that's mm-hmm. where that dust storm is happening. So you need to start pulling them out so that it deteriorates that dust storm. Okay, so From brain there. dump is step number one. Just get it out because when you ruminate, that's what mm-hmm. you're doing. You're just meditating on the on the on the bad. You're meditating on the problem. You're meditating on on the confusion, and it's just going over and over and over. And there's 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 no way out of that. So you need to get it out. So brain dump. All right. Now that we brain dump, you got it. So now you got it. You got all this stuff. It's and you're sitting there and you're holding it like this. And you're like, all right, what do you want to do? Well, what do we do with all this now? So the fact is, whenever we have a bunch of stuff, we need to like acknowledge I have stuff in my hands. I have to acknowledge the emotions. Anything that's going on with it, just look at it and say, I'm afraid. I, I'm angry. Whatever things, just kind of looking at all these things, see some emotions and acknowledge it. They're just emotions. They're not good or bad. Just acknowledge them. Once you go, okay, this is what I'm holding. This is heavy, deep breath. And then you take them and you start sorting them. You put on things, you're going to have two columns. What can you control and what can't you control? Mm -hmm. Very simple is when I look through these things, uh, I'm afraid Alicia is not going to be my friend anymore. I am um, afraid my kid's not going to get into the uh, great high school or college. Whatever those um, things, and you're looking at that and saying what I can control, I can't control if you're going to be my friend or not. That's there's that's somewhat I can't really control. I can control if I send my kid to an ACT um, prep class. Right. I can control mm-hmm. that, but I can't control these other things. I can't. So when you divide them out. Historically, what I found 
when I'm myself and sharing this with others, if you had 15 things that you were holding in that big brain dump, probably 11 or 12 are going to be something you really have no control over. Mm. That's pretty freeing because you're like, oh, but we still want to hold on to them because we want to control them. Like, but, 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 and there's a lot of that. (laughs) And it's like, no, no, here is. So now I got it understood. I've acknowledged it. And you just need to put those dudes in the garbage can because you can't control it. You really, you're not that powerful to take care of everything, even though we feel like we should be, or we can. So now I've got two or three things over here that I can control. Mm -hmm. So from that, look at them. I'm a pretty smart person. You're a pretty smart person. I think pretty much anybody listening to you is extremely smart because they're listening. (laughs) Is that you kind of go, all right, what's the next right thing for me to do? Out of these two to three things that I can do, what makes the most logical sense for me to do? Decide to do it. Um, Another part that I uh, teach in here is that when we say things out loud, it's 10 times more powerful and the scientists that it's been proven uh it's 10 times more powerful when we say it out loud mm-hmm. so look in the mirror look in your face eye to eye you and you this is what i'm doing i've taken it all out i've looked at it i've thrown away what i can't control mm-hmm. i'm looking at two to three things i can this is the best thing i'm going to do i'm going to say it out loud and then you go do it pick up the foot and go and then trust and that's the hard part because we want to go the Sometimes in that step in between, that dust storm starts like, and you start all this. And no, 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 no. I'm going to trust this process and then see where you go from there. It's like I took the action and then see how you react, how how much of that dust storm as you're doing that process that you actually take action instead of getting frozen. Because as you were saying, you just get stuck up there. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you start the rumination. So, wow. So you've given us. And I was writing them down as you were one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, six really actionable steps. You know, these aren't like just sit and think about or, you know, these are real actionable steps. So do the brain dump. I would even back it up okay. to just realize, recognize, become aware that you're in that storm. Sometimes we're in a storm and we don't recognize we're in the storm. We're just feeling frustrated. We're feeling exhausted. We're feeling all these other emotions and we're not recognizing it's because we're in the storm. So recognize you're in the storm. And then when you recognize you're in the storm, that's the time to stop and do a brain dump and say, what's going on inside of my head? What is all this stuff that's going on inside my head? Um, And and Juanina put it so... Uh, you know, she, she really laid it out for us. So stop, do a brain dump, whether you have to sit and write, write stuff out for 10 minutes and just get it out on paper. Or if you can call up a friend and just say, just listen to me for a minute, take notes I'm about to just, I just need to do a brain dump. So if you have a friend like that, I mean, that's an awesome friend to have to say, I just need a brain dump. I just need a brain dump. And then once you get it out, then you can sort it out. You need to get it out to sort it. You can't sort it when it's all jumbled up inside your head and you're just thinking about it. You need to see it. I love to have a whiteboard or those big white sheets that, and I I need to like write things out on it, Mm -hmm. right? And you do that on a whiteboard or something. So then then when you step back and you see it, you're like, oh, now I can (laughs) sort. Now I can see this. I don't need to be looking at anymore. I don't need to be paying attention to that. I can't control it. So don't. Dump, and just start sh- dumping things that you cannot control because um, why hold on to the things you can't control? What is that? What is that saying? God, give me the grace to control, to, to serenity prayer, to accept the things yes, that are in, in the wisdom to know the difference. Difference. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> the mm-hmm. serenity prayer. So we can't control everything. Um, so then dump the things you can't Nor are we called to. We really are. And we're not called to. Right. I think that's a big thing for me was a big shift is I thought I had to, you know, I'm super mom. I have to do it all. I'm super wife. I love my husband. I want, I mean, no, we're not. They're really, and I was depriving other people by trying to take care of their stuff. You weren't allowing them to build resilience, right? That was a story we heard recently about the trees. 
So there's a story about these hydroponic trees that they that they uh, grew in the perfect condition. But when they got to a certain height, they would just fall over. And they couldn't understand why these trees would just die and fall over. And it's because they need, while they're growing up, they need wind resistance. They need the wind to toughen. There's a, a type of bark or a type of, of um, wood, wood that the tree develops that is only developed in resistance, resistance to the wind hitting it. And when in a perfect situation, in a perfect world where there's no resistance, then you're weak. You have no resilience. You don't know how to overcome obstacles. So congratulate yourself if you're having this storm happening, because guess what? You're building resilience and it's coming against you so that you can toughen up. And this is why she is an expert in mental toughness because this is what she's she's sharing with us. How do we come, become mentally tough? So let me finish this up. So <laughs> dump what you, you can't control mm -hmm. and then look at what you can control, which will only be about two or three things, maybe up to five, um, depending on how much stuff you had going on up in your head. And then say out loud what you can do. Say out loud what you can do about it. Is that what it is? Or say what, out loud what, what action, it is. The things you, so you have three to four things you can control. Which one am I going to take action on? Out of the yeah. things I can do, which one thing am I going to decide? Instead of like, oh, I have these four things. I'm going to do all of them. We can do one. Pick, Let's one. pick one. I missed that line. Okay. Pick one. I'm, I'm writing these down. Because I, I, you know, <laughs> I learn as I do these shows, I learn stuff too. So pick one and say out loud what you're going to do about this, because you, you're 10 times more likely to take action on it. If you say it out loud, you hear yourself say it. So say it out loud, what you're going to do about it, and then trust the process. Trust. Take action. You have to talk. Say take you're going to take action and then trust, trust the process. process. Yep. You got I love it. that. I love yeah, it. Awesome. Okay. I met, I missed a couple of things in there, but because no, I was trying to write notes and not and not look like I'm writing notes and still look like I'm paying <laughs> attention. <laughs> Excellent job. You did it's, wonderful. Listen, my job isn't that easy. Everybody thinks I just show up and look pretty. I, I'm I'm taking notes and I still have to look engaged so that you, the <laughs> audience, don't think that I'm I'm just slacking here on my phone while she's talking. No, I got a pen and paper. You can't pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> All awesome. right. So you did so, a great job. You get a platinum star. I get yay. So <laughs> the reason we're sharing this with you today is because we're in a world where women have taken on so much responsibility, right? Like you said at the beginning, Juanina, you're a wife, you're a mother. Those are your first priorities. Um, you're a volunteer. You volunteer at a lot of different different um, organizations with your church and with other organizations. You're part of a lot of different associations, learning associations, you're growing yourself. You have a business that you're growing. You're always taking continuing education for these certifications that you have. Your life is full, the kids have activities. So things aren't getting simpler in our lives. There's always gonna be stuff. There's dinner to cook. There's you know, people calling you, they need this, they need that. Everybody needs something. So this is a method that you can use to shift yourself in neutral. So now, now that you're here, you've done this process. Is this what gets you to neutral? Because I know there's more. <laughs> this gets you to control and that you can make progress, that you don't rely on the past that it dictates. We we can talk in another session about how our brains are wired for patterns. And sometimes we see things and we want to say, oh, that's just the way it's going to be. But this actually gets you into neutral and you can say, hey, OK, now I, with I'm going to take action. This is where I'm going. And was it the right action? Is this what I, do I need to pivot? But yes, this gets you slowed down where you're spinning out of control before and you just got a lot going on. And then you can look at what do you know to be true? Because that's really what neutral is, is what do mm -hmm. I know to be true? Um, my friend Trevor Moab, um, that was his thing is uh, neutral thinking is going to the truth. Anchored in the concept that each moment has a history and life of its own. Uh, so yeah. it's something to that point of where I get to from that standpoint. And it's so full of wisdom is that I need to slow down so I can find the truth. 
Yeah. And so the truth is I, I don't power. want you to go gloss over that because okay. that is very powerful. Each moment has a history of its own because you said just prior to that, that the brain seeks patterns. So mm -hmm. our brain is looking to connect and link things. And it sometimes, sometimes our brain links the wrong things together. It thinks it belongs, but it actually doesn't because it, the brain does not like gaps and it needs to fill those gaps. And sometimes it fills it with erroneous. It's like, it's like a chat GPT. It fills it with erroneous information. One of the things we teach in, in John Gordon is when bra your brain's left, when you leave gaps, I do it with leadership teams. As you leave some information missing, our brains are wired to fill it with negativity. And so it makes it even worse. So you, d you don't leave the gap. We want to bridge it and then say, no, 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 that's not. Um, and you and it takes effort. Like some of this is like, well, yeah, I should do that. We feel better when we say positive things, but sometimes it's so easy to let the junk fly in. And it's like, yeah. and that's where I was. It was, there was so much fun. I couldn't disseminate. So here is, is okay, wait, just slow down. Let's get here. And to, I can recognize some things and take an action um, and then move forward from that side. Yeah. So back to the, each moment has mm -hmm. a history of its own and life of its uh, own. It has a life and a history of its own. So if you did something in one moment that maybe you regretted, it was it was a regretful thing. You don't have to think that that is who you are or what you are. It is a moment in time that you did a regrettable thing, and so therefore, you have the choice now. And this is why I love this because this puts you in choice. That is our number one superpower is choice because God gave us free will and he gave us choice. And so this puts you at choice where now you can say, okay, I did a dumb thing here. I don't want to do that again. So I can make a different choice and your choice needs to be connected to, and you said something um, in our conversations, not, not this conversation about standards. So like your value, what do you value? Am I making a choice based on what I value here? Or am I just going to do dumb, dumb things again? Go ahead. I know, I know you want to say something about standards too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so standard over feelings. My friend Ben Newman um, very much is like, we talk about is that one thing that I'm working on is health. I value health. I want to live a long life with my kids. So one of those things to live that, healthy standard I need to work out at five o'clock in the morning that's my schedule right so at five o'clock in the morning so 4 55 when my alarm goes off I don't feel like getting out of the bed at all but at that point my standard is that I'm going to be healthy and my standard to live to that is I need to work out at five o'clock in the morning so therefore I get out of bed and we, so many times our world is like, what is, does it feel good? Do I like yes, this? what I feel oh, like squishy. today. You know, I don't feel like it. I can do it later. No, no, no. I made a commitment. This is who I said. So we talked about like saying it out loud. I even do that at 4.55 in the morning, having that conversation. Dang like, it. Said, <laughs> I'm going to get up because I'm going to it. <laughs> but it's a decision. Like you said, it's a choice. I made that commitment. And when I live to my standards, I live to what I said I was going to do. And then I don't worry because sometimes feelings can mislead us. They're not yeah. always what's best for us. And so that takes care of accountability. It takes care of integrity. It takes care of, you know, you guys know, I talk about this book all the time, The Four Agreements and uh, the agreement that, um, that, that, that talks about always keeping your word. That's your integrity. So you have to keep your word to yourself first to be in integrity. And when you develop those standards, say, this is how I'm going to live my life. And you keep that word to yourself. And that allows you now not to make excuses for it or cop out or uh, just be someone because now you're out of integrity with yourself and you need to be integrity with yourself. So you don't have that double binding message of, I said, I'm going to do it but I can't even trust me. And we talked about trust. So if you can't trust yourself, how are you going to trust the process? 
So I love that. And, and this is so super simple, people. It's not easy to do, but it it's a simple methodology. It's it's a way to keep your word to yourself. And it's a way to get rid of all that head trash. Um, something else you you said to me, Wenina, as we're, we're rounding this interview out, um, we talked about talking to yourself uh, and treating yourself the way that you would treat someone else. A lot of times we don't treat ourselves the way we would treat other people. So talk into that for a moment. So can I show you a picture I have on my desk? Yeah. Is I actually started uh, using my uh, coach told me to put a picture of my little self on the desk. Oh, look how cute. Oh my gosh, she looks just like your daughter. Me. Oh, she looks yeah. like my daughter. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like me. Um, so I actually literally I gave my daddy this for uh for my wedding and I gave him this uh -huh. so he passed away. I got to keep it and I keep it on my desk. And I constantly, when I start talking to myself in this really negative, like you should have did this, I should all over myself, I yeah, not doing enough. As I look and I say, Would I talk to that little girl? Would I talk how would I talk to that little girl? Because even though I'm a grown woman, I'm still who God created me to be, right? That mm -hmm. little girl. And so there's a lot of, and then the other thing is, would I ever tell her a lie? No. So sometimes for me, a lot of people say, just think positive thoughts and positive, that's going to work. That And it's like, no, I have to tell, I'm built on integrity. So I have to tell myself things that I know to be true. Not just mm -hmm. so when we say I am is, so today is brand new and tomorrow is too. That's one of the anthems I took from John Acuff and put in my everyday looking into a mirror. And I was saying in integrity, even when it's a bad day and I'm having a rough time, I can say that and I'm not lying to myself. I'm telling the truth, right? Another one that I put is I'm the CEO of me and I'm the best boss. And so yeah. because oh, I you, am, you see, I used to say my boss crazy. I'm the CEO of <laughs> my boss. And she a little crazy. She a little off sometimes. I, I, I could say that too. <laughs> But not in a bad derogatory no. way. I know she's she just she's just very has high standards and very demanding. And sometimes I just think she's a little crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> so yes, that's a a whole way of like not just looking at yourself and saying which a positive affirmation. It's what do you know to be true? Because if integrity is part of your values, you can't lie to yourself. That that, that doesn't work. You're in conflict, so you've got to put them. Uh, together, but you can find really good things that are blessings in your life. And what I found is to be intentional is every morning, I think my kids thought I was crazy. I would get up, my husband's like, What the heck is going on? And I'd stand in front of that mirror and I was like, All right. And I would read them out. And it's so I just challenge everybody, try it because it's kind of crazy simple, but it has to be something. And I, I even laminated it because I'm just that geek. Yeah. <laughs> And started like, this is who I am. And um, it's amazing that the switch it can make in such a short amount of time um, when you're valuing yourself. And that's really as I was pouring into that little girl inside of me. I love it. And with that, we have to bring this interview to a close. Uh, I, you know, Winina, we'll we'll talk again. We'll bring you back on for another episode. But um I thank you so much for sharing this, these pearls of wisdom with us from Noble Methods. <laughs> and any last things that you want to share? Do you want to share how people can reach out to you? Um, sure. They can go to Juanina Ray at noblemethods.com. You can go to noblemethods.com and look at look me up and uh, my phone number. You want me to give me your phone number too? No, don't give out your phone number. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm an open book. Here it is. I would tell you there is a, a book. I just love the book, The Standard. I think I actually have it right here. If I do not have my own book, but this has been Newman's The Standard. And um, it's a great read to help you with that, getting your standard and your feelings. Um, nice. Standard All right. over feelings. Standard over feelings. All right, then. So I would challenge you all as we close today, as I always do, to be bold to be brave, and every day do one thing, maybe one thing you've heard today on this show to step out with audacious confidence. And until next time, this is Alicia Curry saying goodbye, and I'll see you on another episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV. Mwah.